I'm going to share with you how to make a crossbody bag. The pattern pieces are marked below and all the adhere interfacing has been applied. So start with your external zip pocket lining and place it on the front panel of your external bag piece. It needs to be two inches from the top. You're going to mark a rectangle three and a half inches from the top centrally. That is six and a half inches by half an inch. This rectangle is your stitch line for your zip pocket. As you can see, I'm using a quilter's ruler and it's incredibly useful for getting straight parallel lines with 90 degree angles. My apologies for the back of my head. One day I shall learn how to take videos without the back of my head. So once you've marked it, stitch round. Then we're going to cut down the middle and into the corners of the rectangle as shown just diagonally there. Be very careful not to cut the actual stitches. So once we've done that, we're going to pull this lining fabric for the pocket through to the other side and give it a really good press. So press that out with a good hot iron. Now I'm going to shorten my zip and uh, make it the right length for the pocket. So I'm just doing some quick hand stitching to hold the zip together so it doesn't pull apart. And now I'm going to trim the zip. Now place that behind your open rectangle. I'm using fabric tack just to hold it in place. There are different methods for doing this. You could hand tack it or you could use a glue stick or pins. Personally, I um, I'm not confident enough to sew zips neatly with just pins. I do prefer to glue the zip in place to hold it temporarily. Once your glue's set and you've got your zip nicely aligned, top stitch around the edge of this pocket. There we go. Right. Fold up the bottom of your zip pocket lining to meet the top. Pin that in place and then machine stitch around the three raw edges. This will complete your pocket. If you can what if you want you can zigzag your raw edges. I have to admit I've never bothered and it's never been an issue. Let's make the external slip pockets. I've got two pieces here. I'm going to sew them together along the top, then uh, press them and top stitch to give a nice crisp top edge to this these two slip pockets. So once you've done that, place it on your external bag pattern piece. So the side panels, side, up, side edges and the bottom edges align. And draw a central line with tailor's chalk down the middle. This is going to divide your slip pocket in two. Pin in place, then face the edges of the pocket and machine stitch the central line, making sure you back stitch at the top central point. There you go. Now let's complete the outer bag pieces. Place the right sides together of the back panel and the front panel. Now I've used a quarter of an inch seam allowance on this bag. It's not very wide, um, but that reduces the bulk in the seams. So stitch along the sides and the bottom and trim your corners at the bottom just to reduce bulk. Now we're going to make the lining. So lining's already got fusible uh, interfacing on the back. I'm going to insert a magnetic snap for closure. So I've got a piece of fusible fleece here that's two to three inches square. I'm going to iron it in place and then mark the position of the magnetic snap. So this is central. So I'm just going to work that out. I'll mark it where the two prongs are going to go through just used a pencil. I like to use a seam ripper to uh, make those slits. If you've got fray stopper put it on, if not just put your washer, your prongs through, your washer on and open the prongs out. At this point I do like to add some fusible interfacing on the back just to really secure the magnetic snap. Do repeat for your second side. You're going to need to create two um, belt loops for your D-rings. These are three inches long and you just fold them in half with the D-ring on and stitch to the side of each side seam. 
put the right sides of the lining fabric to right sides facing each other, pin around the sides and along the bottom. As before, we're going to stitch the side seams, but along the bottom, we're going to leave a big turning gap. Now place the two bag pieces together so the right sides of each are facing each other and the side seams are aligned and the top edges are aligned. Pin that all carefully all the way around. And then we're going to machine stitch that together. Now we've done that, we're going to pull it through that gap we left in the lining fabric. Pull it through and give it a press along this top edge. Now let's turn in these raw edges from your turning gap. Just press those in. I think I press them, hold with pins. And then I'm just going to top stitch that shut. You might like to hand stitch with a ladder stitch if you prefer. Place that inside the bag and then top stitch along that top edge. Right, let's finish off the adjustable shoulder strap. I've cut a piece that's 56 inches long and average adjustable strap is 54. It's just I'm a tall person. Thread it through the slider. and fold back and then we're going to rectangularly stitch that to secure it. Thread the strap through the D-ring, back through the slider. And then through the second D-ring and rectangular stitch to secure. One finished crossbody bag. I hope you love yours as much as I do mine. Don't forget to subscribe.